All right. Woo-hoo. What's up, people of the world? <laughs> I'm Shola Mighty Duenya, joined by my handsome co host, Jacob, Jacob Scott, Scott Thomas. Thomas Bertrand. Yep, that's right. We are the Lone Lobo Show, back and better than ever. Booyah. Back, I mean, here. This is my camera. Oh, uh, we got three <laughs> cameras now, bitches. Uh-huh. Here, here. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, what's going on, guys? We are coming back at you again. Nine months later, Woo-hoo. nine months later, I can't believe it. Welcome to the new set. This is welcome to what are we? What are we calling our set? My house. I was just saying your yes. living room. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call it my living room. I love it. Your secret um, headquarters. Yeah, happen? we're we're hopping into season two. We're so grateful that um, uh, you guys have allowed us to come back after <laughs> nine months of not hearing. Uh, from the podcast, yeah. but we promised it was for a good reason. We had to sort up uh, some things, get our ducks in a row. We dropped the big man. Dropped the big man. What? But, but it was because we were waiting for someone really special. That's true. Our second Lone Lobos baby. That's true. Oh, Do yeah. You know what I'm talking about, Jacob? Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of the reason that the podcast took nine months because, you know, and I have the sonogram here. Is that oh. a sonogram? <laughs> yeah, it's called, I know what you're talking about. We have <laughs> our second baby. Jaime had the first baby on the show. I forgot that you got her pregnant. Jacoba. <laughs> Jacoba. And now we have the second baby. Show him your baby, Isn't bro. Isn't she cute, Jacob? Dude, I totally forgot about this. Show it Show it to your camera, Jacob. Wow. Okay, guys. And we'll put it up on screen. The first picture. The big reveal. Is it a girl or a boy? It's a, oh, it's, it's a, a boy. boy. Look at the dong on that guy. Look how cute it is. He's so sweet. Look, it even says. Wait, Jacob is the Bertrand guy's name? Is the head. guy's name first? Or the girl's name first? What do you mean? Like, is it go male, female? Like, am I the girl or the guy in this relationship? Are you the mom or the dad? Are you yeah, saying? you're the mom. I'm the mom. Yeah, you'd be a really? good mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I'd be a better dad. No. <laughs> no. No, no, you no. carry that shit. No, you're too angry. <laughs> Anyways, that's why. The, that, that's why. <laughs> yeah, you can't even teach someone. Omi just straight up said, first episode back, women are angry." <laughs> no, no, no. That's why you're the mom because you you wouldn't be the dad because you'd be a too angry dad. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. But we're back. Bitch. Jordan goes, yeah, <laughs> and and to kind of set off mm. our our podcast, you know, our, our season two, first we wanted to introduce our team. Ooh. You know, we got a a a podcast, like a, a crew cam now. Um we have, yeah. So let's we we can switch to the casting couch. This is the casting couch. <laughs> This is Monica's like, can we please change the name? Monica? <laughs> or yeah, you guys should introduce ourselves yourselves. Go. So first up we have on our left. Will it be left? Yeah. Camera left. Camera left. Yeah. On Here the left. Go. Yes. Hello. Hello everyone. Hello again. Hope y'all are doing great. I'm Monica. What's your last name? <laughs> That's confidential. Yeah. Oh dang. Can't have people finding me on the yeah. internet. <laughs> And wait, and what do you do here? Um, I am now the producer for Lone Lobo Season 2. That's fucking right. Very Woo-hoo. excited to be back on this journey with all of you guys. And to her right. My left. To her right. <laughs> to the <laughs> camera right. right. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, y'all? My name is Jordan, a.k.a. JM Cam. I'm one of the producers here. Uh-huh. And I'm producing right now by doing things like this ah! and doing things like this yeah! <laughs> and doing things like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I cut away. I had to cut away from that camera. Sorry. But yeah, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Hell yeah! And to set off our beautiful second season journey, I thought we could take a shot. My dad kind of. Can you play the Pina Colada song? No, we can't play it. Why not? Because it's DMCA copyright. And, Do you but you know, it isn't DMCA, Lada. these bad boys. Oh yeah, I actually Googled this. Our Attack on Titan. Shot glasses. Shot glasses. So let's clink 
and take a, a nice hefty. This is all tequila. Do you guys do tequila? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, Monica said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Hey. Pa arriba. Pa arriba. Pa abajo. Pa centra. Pa centra. I forget it every time. <laughs> wow. That was pretty smooth. I think that we should do like 30 years old. I think we should do like five more. All right. Let's do it. Okay. Oshun, pour the alcohol. And and to Oshun is diligently working in the back. And because we can't have just the naughty, we have to have the nice as well. Jacob, I have these two oh, man. What turmeric ginger shots as well. Hey, you know what? I'm getting over a sickness. Which do you, which do you prefer? If it was a, a shot of vodka or a shot of immunity boost? I mean, immunity, immunity, immunity boost is definitely easier. Really? I think so. Then vodka? Then that wasn't vodka. That was tequila, but that's okay. Vodka Anyways, let's do it. Blech. Wait. This one's for all the health nuts out there. Well, maybe, I don't know. I, I haven't had an immu immunity boost in a long time. Maybe this is like super ass and I don't know. Can we do a, can we do like a sound effect when we clink our glasses? Okay, ready? Oh, you sing in post. Yeah, yeah, in post. Clean. It'll just be me going clean. Okay. okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> Not bad. This is spicy. Spicy. Oh my God, Great. it's really spicy. Yeah, you know my nose sweats when I get some spicy? Don't you have that picture of me of... Yeah, do you want to do the last dab right now too? I have it. Fuck no, I don't want to do the last dab. Dude, I would die. I would literally explode. I already have a sensitive tummy. But then we can. But then we can get into the rest of our talking points, or we'll do it at the end. No, if we're gonna do it, we should do it at the beginning. No, no, no we'll do it at the end, so that it oh, doesn't God, ruin everything. No, else. I don't want to do it at the end. Okay, then you want to do it right now? I would rather do it now because then just the whole time I'm gonna be thinking about fuck. I'm gonna shit my pants. You want the mic? Why is it so dark? Oh man, you give me a big one too. Try Welcome to this week's episode. <laughs> where I'm joined by. Jacob Scott Thomas Bertrand. And this is the show, Lone Lobos. Yeah. Dude, I'm so nervous. Are you doing it? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Well, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. I think the cracker helps. I mean, I'm already sweating. Oh, it's still going. It's getting hotter. <coughs> that wasn't actually that bad. I think the cracker. It's, it's not horrible. I mean, I'm still. I'm still pretty spicy. I'm sweating. Woo! <sighs> I think. No, I we got to do a bigger one then. <laughs> what? The cracker totally. It totally soaks into the cracker. I still think it's hot. Okay. It's not as hot as the jailhouse tacos, though. Yeah, those were way more spicy. That's the spiciest thing I've ever had in my life. I All right, Jacob. So, so let's catch up. The podcast hasn't seen us for nine. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, it's like it's still going. The podcast hasn't seen you for nine months. Has it been that long? September. What was the last thing that we spoke about? I can't even remember. Probably. I don't know. The last time we spoke well, my head is itchy. Um, was when we did the episode with um, your co-stars from Cobra Kai, Griffin. Oh, Griffin and Una. Yes. Those were our last episodes. Wow. Bro, there's just a corner of my mouth. It's just like <clears throat> pulsing. Yeah, I feel my tongue pulsing. Since we last left, we had New Year's. Yeah. Your birthday. Oh, yeah. You went to Tokyo. Went to Japan. Or yeah, you went to Japan. You, what else? Dude, I took a sip and it like carried some of the spice in my throat. Fuck. But tell us, man. Tell us how you've been. I've been good. <laughs> Dude, oh my God. This is fucking spicy. Okay. Um, I've been good. Um, Japan was super, super cool. How long were you out this there This is for? fucking spicy, bro. Dude, don't let the momentum die. I want to. Okay, dude, you're so, sweating though. I can see it on your dude, face. Yeah, you're I'm, full sweating. Dude, it's super spicy. Um, 
I was there for a little over two weeks. Okay. Highs and lows. Was it exactly what you'd expect it to be like? Um, the high was I randomly met people one night at a bar that I was I was alone one night at a bar and I completely hung- alone. Yeah, it was just me. Why? Um, I was just like I was starting to edit uh the podcast and it was like late one night and I was <clears throat> I was in the lobby and uh, there was the only place I had Wi Fi in this hotel. And it was late at night. And then I was like, oh, man, like, I'm really hungry. Wow, it was like, what it was like an adult. Yeah, Just I know. walks over to the bar at yeah, night? walked over to a bar. Because Osaka, this is in Osaka. And Osaka is known for having, like, chicken skewers and stuff. Or, like, just food on a stick. That's what I was told. <clears throat> and uh, so I go to this bar, get some food. And then there's, like, a group of kids in the back. Or they're, like, I think they're, like, around my age. And they're being super loud, which is kind of taboo in Japan. Like, from what I know is everyone like very much keeps themselves and okay. they're being really loud and they were playing a lot of American music in uh, the bar. In the bar. They were playing, uh, they played Replay by Rihanna. How does that one go? I'm Mr. DJ, I want to replay Mr. DJ, want your dirty music? Oh, yeah, yeah. And then they played Promiscuous Girl and I fucking love that song. Yeah. So I was like, I'm trying to Promiscuous Girl. Um, but anyways, I ended up going to karaoke with, the, karaoke with these people and just stay out the entire night. And that's, it was the first time I actually ever blacked out. <laughs> I don't think I told you this. You blacked out in Japan? And you made it back to your hotel? Okay, so, <coughs> so I was editing the podcast. And so I just- You were editing the podcast blacked <laughs> out? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. So before this- So I was, boring. <laughs> I was I fucking blacked out and edited <laughs> all of the whole second season, show. So uh, I was editing the podcast. So I like, and went to go get. I just wanted food, so I put my computer in my backpack, and I had like all my magic decks and stuff in my back because I always travel with my magic decks in my Gotta. limited edition playmats. Yeah, what if someone steals something from the hotel room? Exactly, I yeah. have it with me. It's my most important stuff. So I have the hard drives with all like the future episodes on there, and so I go to this place. I want to say I had, like, to be conservative, I had eight whiskey highballs, but I genuinely feel like I had like twelve. What? Wait, I don't even know what that is. I don't, I don't even really shot? know what a whiskey highball is. They ordered them. They ordered all the drinks. How big is it? They were Korean. The group I was with was were all Korean. Um, I get up to pay, and one of the guys in the group, they are also getting up to pay. He was wearing an Arteryx jacket, and I was like, oh, sick jacket. So I start speaking the, the little bit of Korean that I know, which is thank you and I love you. <laughs> and they thought that was like the best thing ever. So they're like, oh, come to karaoke with us. And I was supposed to get up at 4.30 a.m. and take a three-hour train to Hiroshima because Blake really wanted to go. I was traveling with my brother, Blake. Okay. He really wanted to go to Hiroshima. And it's like 1 a.m. at this point, And I'm like, this seems like a cool story, like to stay out with these people. So yeah, I'll just pull an all-nighter and just do that. So we go to this karaoke bar and uh, they're playing a ton of Hyoko. Shout out Josa. Oh, for yeah. Introducing me to Hyoko. And I knew a lot of the songs and they were like, Whoa! like that's so cool. Oh my God. And they're just like ordering drinks, like back to back to back. Like as soon as my drink gets like half, they ordered me another one. Okay. And like we just drank and drank and drank and drank. And it was really fun. And they were super fucking crazy. Um, and and you're forgetting the part where I asked you twice now how you got home. Oh, how I got home? Okay. So, I Blake FaceTimes me. It's like 5 a.m. And he's like, oh my God. Where the fuck are you? Because he wakes up and I'm just not there. And so he's like, where the fuck are you? <laughs> I'm still editing the podcast. I don't know why I'm I was like, what's up? And everyone in the back is like, hi. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. Sarange. And, uh, I'm like, I'll be there. I'll be there. And so I get out of the karaoke bar at like 6 a.m. I kind of like am walking around and it's it's still dark out. And so I'm like, okay, like I kind of know how to get back. So I stumble back, make my way back to the hotel room. And my phone's about to die. I get there. And Blake's like, man, what the fuck? Like where you been? Da, da, da. And I'm just like, I just need to sit down for 20 minutes. Just let me sit down for 20 minutes. <laughs> and I sit down. And he goes, oh, man, for sure. Hey, where's your backpack? <gasps> I fucking left my backpack. At the karaoke bar with all my magic decks, the Lone Lobos hard drive, oh my, my computer. Gosh. And I was like, fuck. And I'm so like <clears throat> really drunk. So I'm just like, fuck, I'll just, I'll just go back out. And so I run back out of the hotel room. I forget to charge my phone. So my phone's dead at this point. I finally see the, the sign of this karaoke spot. Like the, it's a little okay. smiley face of the guy like this. Mm. It looks like a little emoji. I'm like, fuck, finally. Thank God. I walk up and it's a different karaoke spot. And the oh, karaoke place chain. I went to was like a Starbucks. It was like a chain karaoke bar. So 
I walk three blocks and there's another one and it's not the one that I went to. I walk another two blocks and there's another one, but not the one I went to. So now I'm like, and now I'm lost because I've walked so far (laughs) looking and I'm pretty drunk and now it's daytime. And your phone is dead. Everything looks way different and my phone is dead. (laughs) So now I'm just asking people, Shinkansen, Desuka, like where's the train station? Because I know how to get back from there. So I get back to the hotel at like 8 a.m. Oh my gosh, your brother's like- Blake's pissed. Because you guys- Blake's a moody kid. Yeah. And he really wanted to go to Hiroshima for, you know, really wanted to go there. And uh, Aiden, who's also with there traveling with me, one of my buddies, he's he's like looking up karaoke bars. He's like, we got to find your fucking backpack. <sighs> and he finds one. He's like, is this it? I'm like, no, is this, is this it? And he shows me one and it looked like the lobby. And I was like, yeah, that one actually does look like it. He's like, okay, let's go. So we go there. And by now, this time I charged my phone. <sighs> and then one of the guys in the group, DM'd me and was like, I have your backpack. What? And they were still at the fucking karaoke bar at like 8.45 in the morning. They were just still singing. They were still out there singing. Well, congratulations. Yeah, so I got, got my computer. Saved by the And bell. then we couldn't, Blake didn't want to go to Hiroshima anymore. So we oh, went wow. to Kyoto and we walked like four miles and I was carrying everything in my backpack and I had got no sleep. And it was, it was very brutal. It, wow. Kyoto was beautiful. So, so a, a proper hangover. It, I don't even think I was hung over. It was just like, I just felt like... Because you didn't sleep. I didn't though. sleep. Like, yeah. I felt more of the effects of me not sleeping and then You're walking discombobulated. around like a bunch of miles in my slip-on vans and a heavy backpack. And yeah. your birthday? You spent your birthday out there? What did you do on your birthday? We went to this really uh, fancy meat place. Okay. Dude, A1, Wagyu. A1 like Wagyu beef is super cheap there. Also, the food there is insanely cheap. Like... You don't drink coffee? No, I don't drink coffee, but I started there because there's vending machines all over the place and you can get like a Coca-Cola sized can of coffee. And the vending machines are hot and cold, which is kind of cool. But it was 100 yen. Wasn't get that like a what full it was Coca-Cola like thing for the, 70 cents. Wasn't that what it was like in like the 70s and 80s? You just had vending machines where you put where you get coffee and I don't know. I mean, I just watched Air and they had one. So Oh, was Air good? Yeah, I liked it. Hmm. Is it worth the price of an admissions ticket? Well, I'm off the movie pass, so I don't pay emissions. Oh, damn. So it was but worth for me, for me, do you think it's worth fifteen? Yeah, fifteen. That's how much a movie ticket is. Damn. Right. Uh, yeah. If you're going yeah, to like yeah. Alamo, it was good. Uh, yeah, I, I I really enjoyed it. I didn't know anything about really the the Michael Jordan story or how they made the shoes or yeah, how they made the shoe, but it was interesting. Hmm. And I, yeah, it's kind of all I have to kind of all I have to say about it. I've watched 72 movies this year. Really? Yeah. What's been the one that stuck with you the most? Harder They Fall. I really liked. Oh, I never Russian saw that. That's a like Keith Stanfield, Idris Elba. Like yeah. cowboy movie, right? Um, all right. Dude, so the spice has subsided, but I can't imagine doing hot ones and like ramping oh, up to that. Actually. And it's like consistently hot. And I hear that this isn't even the hot. Well, on the show, this isn't the hottest one. This is the what? second hottest. There's one that's hotter. Yeah, a new one. Okay, okay, okay. Honestly, that one wasn't even close to the the one that we had in Atlanta. No? No, I don't think so. That one I just remember being like, holy fuck, like I've never experienced this like ever. Yeah, that was bad. But that also was... we were so unaccustomed to s- such spicy food yet. So your tolerance was much lower. I don't think my... Yeah, for sure. You think my tolerance is that much different now? Yes. All right, here you go. Here's the, last, here's the last 10, okay? Okay. Uh, oh, yesterday like I best? went to the Alamo and watched Days of Confused. Oh, what'd you Fantastic. think? Fantastic. It's good, right? Ben Affleck with the little yeah, water paddle. Yeah. With the lick, giving him a lick. Uh, yeah. I saw that movie when I was 16. I remember being like, damn, why the fuck isn't my high school like this? Here's my favorite one. Do you know this one? What? Hey, you got a J? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like about these high no, schools. No, what? no, no. You're going to say no, okay? Hey, you got a J? No. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> That's Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> and then, yeah, of course, the, the, that one. That's what I like about these. Uh, so I saw that one yesterday. I, I saw Air the Day Before, day day Renfield. Day. Was that good? Uh, yeah, I, it was really campy. It, I, my favorite scene was there was this scene where Nicholas Holt cuts off both arms of this guy, picks up both of the arms, and uses them as javelins to throw the <laughs> arms through someone else's chest. That's that was the most savage. There, the, the action was good. John Chihangir. Isn't it? Yep. You're lying. Yep. He gets slaughtered. Shout out John. Straight slaughtered. Good old fucking um, Rickenberger, bro. Then I watched Suzume. Three and a half stars. Oh, not his best? 
No, but it was cute. Damn. Cute. Um, has those like tearjerker scenes towards the end that those movies do. Really beautiful, but not really. I didn't think it was anything too out Good of scene. the norm from what we've seen from him. Okay. Um, four and a half stars. Rewatch Transformers. The first one? Fuck, what a good movie that is. Dude, that is, movie's dude. great. Uh, I fuck with Shia. So good. The next one comes out on my birthday. I'm excited to see it. Really? I've it does? the trailers for it, yeah. Number seven. This is the seventh the one? Seventh Transformers movie. Whoa. Saw the Super Mario movie. That was pretty good. The Peaches fucking song is like the best thing that's come out of that movie. Peaches, 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 peaches. I've already, I've just heard it too much, maybe. Maybe I've just already heard I, it. I much. just saw it like two days okay. ago. So. Um, He's so fresh, and I fucking love Jack Black. That guy's awesome. I watched the D&D movie, I, Tanya, Modern Times, Goodfellas, Inception, Man of Steel, From Dust Till Dawn, La La Land, The Town, Social Network, Basketball Diaries, Slumdog Millionaire. The Town, what'd you think? Town, I liked it. It's fucking brilliant. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was It was, uh, It was. was a good movie. Of, of the heist movies, yeah, I, I liked it. And yeah, uh, the, the thing I remember most about that movie, years ago when I first met you, you said, There's this movie, The Town, I really like. <laughs> And there's this part in the movie where Jeremy Renner, where Ben Affleck comes up to Jeremy. Renner yeah, I was says, just about to repeat this scene. <laughs> and he says, Hey, we're going to hey. go hurt a lot of people and you can't ask me any questions about it later. You down? And Jeremy Renner says, Whose car are we taking? <laughs> that, was the, that was the only thing I remembered about the movie. It's like the best when scene I, the movie. When I saw the town, I was like, Oh, Jacob told me about that scene. And sure enough, probably the most iconic line from the movie. It's the fucking coolest scene. Yeah. Cool well, scene. The, or when he's like, uh, his, his name's Close. Jim, but they call him, what? Uh, his name's Jim, but everyone calls him Jim. Yeah. Like, all my teachers be like, oh, hey, take this kid. He's a real gem. That's also a great line. I love Yeah, that one wasn't as good as the first dude, one. Dude, I, I, yeah, I yeah, love yeah, that yeah. movie. I just love that movie. But yeah, I've, I've watched some bangers. Boop, 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 boop. Conspiracy time. Do I need my computer for this or no? This no. This is that time in the episode where we talk about our favorite conspiracies. I actually have a couple before we get into the bowl and the hats. Thank you. The bowl. Mo- oh, Monica has gracefully made these delicious. T- no. Oi! You can really. Oh no! I didn't fuck up. Press it into my scalp if you want. Yeah, I'm really gonna conform mine. Okay. You look like um, you look kind of like an elf, maybe. Oh, let's see. <laughs> Dude, you really look like a conquistador. Hernan, is that you? Hernan. See, <laughs> Hernan Cortes. See, si. don't don't people in Spain that have a lisp? They say "see, si. gracias." Yeah, they might. Okay, bro, imagine speaking Spanish with a fucking lisp. Do you have a favorite conspiracy, Jacob? Yeah. Yeah. Are you gonna name a dumb one though? <laughs> one that <laughs> uh, one that could be plausible. Do you have one that you actually might believe? Uh yeah, I actually do believe this one. Oh really? <clears throat> I do. Um, I think there's a cure for cancer. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've talked to you about discussed this. this one before, that yeah. there is a cure for cancer. I think there's a cure. so much money. They make so much of, money off of chemo, off of the meds from chemo, off of... I think there's... Because if, if you have a cure for cancer and you make it cost a million dollars, two million dollars to have the thing, you're still losing way more money than having all of these doctors there who are charging for their time and all of the medicine you're charging and the equipment and all these things you're losing out on all that money i think there's a cure for cancer but because it makes so much money that i mean do we live in fucking america it's a huge cap like i don't know i think that is totally possible Mm. here's here's my favorite conspiracy okay okay and this is one that i think i've I've (laughs) chatted with you about before bro and i feel kind of like kind of like a Mm. dork for for maybe half believing this one Oh, I'm curious. This is about the moon landing, Jacob. Are you fucking... Really? Buzz Aldrin is falling. <laughs> but see, that was... Buzz! The, that was... Hear the, me out. That was the ghost. So Buzz Aldrin. Buzz Aldrin. He's got bad knees, right? He can't walk on the moon. Okay, what about that police song? No, bro? no, no, wait, wait. So, so Buzz Aldrin on, walk is walking out moon. of his hotel one night, right? Is this post in the or 90s? Pre- this is post to him going to the moon. Okay. Um, when these people from a church walk up to him and say, 
buzz, buzz, buzz. We'll donate X amount of dollars. Let's just say it's $10,000. We'll donate $10,000 to a charity of your choice if you swear on this Bible right now that you went to the moon as he's walking to his car. No, 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 I won't do it. Buzz, buzz, for the children, just swear on this Bible that you went to the moon and we'll donate it. For, you know, you, n- money, the money's not out of your pocket. We'll donate it. No, no, no. Why didn't he do it, Jacob? That's fucking stupid. I wouldn't do that either. What? No. Not if you went to the moon? Aren't you religious? Yeah, I think that's stupid. I'm not going to swear on the Bible for someone's like little fucking game. Wow. So you didn't go to the moon either. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I can't believe that you're... So you're not going to swear on a Bible? To donate money to, to children? I don't know if these people are just doing it for a fucking headline anyway. But even if they but even if they aren't, why would you I'll go donate to children. I donate to children all the time. <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah, I do. I donate to Claremont High School and they're gonna erect a statue <laughs> of me. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. Okay. Well the that's the one studious, that's the one that I was fishy studious. about because I was like, dude, even if you're even if Yeah, you're fake, like, why would you why wouldn't you do it anyways? Whatever. whatever. It's what I got. Is he- <laughs> <laughs> no kizzy. I went to the fucking moon. <laughs> Donate to the kids with. Um, <laughs> I like you're like, yeah, fuck it. Like, I fucking swear to God. I, fucking care. Yeah, yeah. I swear to God. Yeah, I went to the fucking moon. Okay. Is Buzz Aldrin like super religious? I don't know. Buzz Aldrin's. Um, it's okay. I'll just- you should wear that one. That one looks funny. <laughs> Um, you know what we need next time we like show a hair clip. You keep that one. I'll keep this one, and you just need a hair clip because this one fits me pretty good. Perfect. Here's another one that I think uh, also uh, could be real. So you have gas in your stomach, right? Okay. Yeah, and you uh, you feel I have to fart. Uh, <laughs> fart. <laughs> I have, to fart. You I have all this like gas, this? right? And then <laughs> when you hold it, you don't fart, yeah. and that gas has to go somewhere, right? And slowly but surely, it rises up, and you burp it out. Okay. So you're burping fart. <laughs> fart particles, poop particles that you're burping out. What do you think of that, Bill and I? You think that's true? Because what if you have to fart? You've had that feeling before when you have to fart, but you don't do it. I don't think farts directly correlated to uh, changing. But where did the gas go? <laughs> where? If my shit's puckered, where does it go? <laughs> if my shit is a steel motherfucking trap... Bro, it's fucking, it's, gas is so tiny, it, it leaks out of you. It's like osmosis into the air. So you're saying it's more likely for it to leak out of your skin before it leaks out of the natural orifice that it's connected to? That's what you're saying. Dude, that natural orifice is like 60 feet long. And? This shit is, look at that. That's nothing. 60 Speak feet, for yourself, 60 anyway. feet for atoms to move versus an inch. Tell me, <laughs> tell me that's that's less space, bro. All right, sure, whatever. I do like the idea of people going like <laughs> they're dying on this hill, like yo, you fucking burp farts. I know everybody burps farts. I think that that's why maybe burps smell bad. No, well, I mean, yeah, that's why burps smell bad. But maybe that's why it's not polite to burp burp because it's the same. It's the it's same reason. It's yeah, you don't want to pass gas. So oh, that's why you don't burp. I never thought about it that way. Do when you burp, do your burps like smell really bad? It depends. Mm. Who is the worst? It depends if I go like farts? this. It depends if I go. Uh, oh, like. Bleh. Or if I go. Bleh. <laughs> <laughs> do I fucking do that? Like, yeah. Yeah, when I'm talking to someone. Oh, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> like it's a fucking it just wafts back up. Into- <laughs> oh, you're like, yeah. mm. oh, I shouldn't eat that fucking hot dog. Mm. Yeah, sometimes I pretend I'm vaping and I go, I burp and then try to suck it back into my nose. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and then you go back up. Yeah. Yeah, you're saying? Or sometimes I try to, you know how you can get the smoke to come out of your nose? Sometimes I do that with my burps. I go. <laughs> you do do that a lot, actually. Yeah. Oh, you do do that a lot. It's better, I find. <laughs> how do you guys burp? Are you guys much of a burper? Um, <laughs> They're like, why did normally, you bring us on for this segment? Yeah, normally I do. Yeah, when that nose thing. I feel like I've done that. Yeah, okay. burp through your nose. Monica, do it you burns, does it burn a little bit? Yeah, a little bit, <laughs> a little spicy. Oh yeah. Okay. So so after so those were our favorite um, 
conspiracies. Monica and, and Jordan have compiled a few conspiracy theories, the names of them, and we're going to try to guess what they are. Oh, sick. And see if we have a, a gist of, of what they might do. So would you like to go first or second? I'll go first. If I say something too bad, is Miss Carmelita going to hit me? Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. Oh, God, she already beats me so much. I don't know if I'm ready for this. I told him about how you think I should marry a Latina. <laughs> she just walks away. <laughs> this is so broad. It just says Elvis. Okay, so this is an Elvis conspiracy? This is an Elvis conspiracy. Yeah, what do you think it is? I think that the conspiracy is that while Elvis was in surgery... Surgery for what? While he was in surgery for his drug problem, drug-related issues, mm -hmm. something with his liver. Okay. They took a bunch of shit from Venezuela and they put it inside of him to murder him. Oh. That's why he died. <laughs> Your conspiracy is that he didn't actually die because of poop being clogged up inside of him. They put in the poop They put in the poop inside of him. <laughs> they... Got you. So yeah. he had imported feces. He had imported Venezuelan shit as okay. a murder de device. And he was a little husky at the time. You know, no shame to Elvis. Love yourself. Love your body. Is that... And is that what it is? That is incredibly off. Okay. Oh, shit. Really? Yes. Dang. The, the theory is, is that apparently he's alive and he's living on Mars. Okay. Monica, Mine is way he, better than that. What? Mars? How did he get there? So according to like the, you know like the UK tabloids, uh -huh. they <laughs> got an guys. image of Fucking Mars. Jake bon oh, and they saw a guy. They, they <laughs> like, saw an image of uh, like a figure that looked like he was going like that. So people were like, "Oh my god, Elvis!" Okay, alive so Elvis is just chilling on Mars. And he's like, "Oh man, fuck! I'm so fucking bored." I was do a concert for myself. <laughs> <laughs> like he's like, "How are they going to know it's me and not just some Mars rock?" <laughs> Better do the groovy. Nice try, though. It sounds like a good uh, movie, though. Instead of uh, Matt Damon on Mars for The Martian, it's oh, Elvis. It's Elvis and the Mars Austin rover. Austin Butler. Surviving, yeah. That okay. was a good one, though. Nice try, Jacob. I this is pretty good. good for your improv as well. Yeah. Trying to come up with something. All right, you go. All right. I hope I get a naughty one. I really want some. Well, you can always make it naughty. Oh. I hope it's about Millie Bobble. I hope I want a Millie Bobby conspiracy too. Um, okay. <laughs> Is there one in there? No. Ah. I'm sorry to disappoint. Greta Thunberg. She's a robot. She's, She's a, robot a robot created by the alt left. Oh, really? That's what I don't mean? know. <laughs> that's my guess. She's a, a robot created by the alt left what a quick to gain response. to gain sympathy among the young voters. Um. Oh, yeah, I, I mean, that, that, that sounds pretty realistic. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go along similar lines and say that they, that they created Greta Thunberg to be so unlikable. What? Is she unlikable? I, know, I don't really know much about well, her. Well, the right doesn't like her. Oh. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think it's a diversion. Maybe she's, maybe she's double-crossing. Maybe... Oh, here's what. Here's oh, like she what, was created what. by the right? No, to she, ensure she's that they an hate AI, and the AI is trying to throw people off by telling them, hey, we need to save the Earth, knowing that humans aren't going to do that, that we're too far gone. Okay. So, it's, it's a win-win. A, the people who don't like Greta Thunberg are still going to not like her, uh -huh. and the people that support her are going to get caught up in this evil... You know, but what's the end game of the AI to take over the world and wear us as skin suits? Oh, and Greta yeah. Thunberg's the first one to do that. She's well, the she's first already skin suit she's AI. already no, no no she's already she's already skin suited up. <laughs> the theory actually is that she's a time traveler and she's here what? to save us all. That's the the conspiracy theory about her. There is this image found of her or claims it's her and it's a girl like back in the 1920s on a farm. And the girl in the image apparently looks identical to Greta Thunberg. And everyone's like, oh, that's her. Uh -huh. But why would someone from the past come here? Wouldn't it be someone from the future comes back? Yeah, well, if you're from the future, you can go past from the past, darling. But I like that one, actually. That's not bad. If she's a 
Whoa. Whoa. That really Yo, looks like maybe her. Maybe we can throw up the image. Yo, that's thing. crazy, actually. That photo did look like her. Okay, but is that photo also not just like someone put a black and white? Or is that, is it, it like it's verified a real photo. from? It's a doc, it's a, like it's not doctored. No, it's a uh, U.S. library has confirmed the photograph of a girl who bears a striking resemblance to teenage climate activist Greta, how do you say her name? Thunberg. Thunberg. Greta Thunberg. Oh, Thunberg? I th- oh, uh, I've heard Thunberg, but I think it's Thunberg. The photo has not been doctored, the Washington mm-hmm. University said. Dude, that really looks, that really did but look like why her. would she lie about it? The photograph did. is from 1898 from the Klondike Gold Rush. Why would well, she lie? Why would she not come clean? Because you can't change, that's the first rule of the multiverse, bruh. You don't, you can't tell anyone because then. That's just that a, that's just a plot device to add conflict. There's like, they. No, right, but who would you tell? No one would believe you. She has a picture. Yeah, but it, that's why it, it's a conspiracy now. We have the picture now and it's not facts. Dumbass. All right, we got to get Greta on the podcast. We got to, we'll, we'll reach out to her people, show her the picture and then. We can, I think we can do it, bro. We should shoot some DMs. Does she have Instagram? No. I mean, she's an AI. She yeah, she, gonna, she, she she's going to see, she's yeah. already seen this. It's okay. Um, I like our robot idea. <clears throat> Dude, I can't believe it. It's been nine months. Season five of Cobra Kai released and we'd never t- spoke about it. Do we really know? Blue not? Beetle trailer dropped. Dropped. Never spoke about it. Um, we're swinging for the fences. I wonder if we, if there's any Lone Lobos exclusives that we can give about. I think it's off now. Six. It's hot. Oh, what the fuck? The mix of the hot sauce and your tinfoil hat is... Yeah, it's making me hot. We're doing the Sekai Tekai, the world tournament. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Hawk doesn't win, so we can just get that right out of the question. That's probably very true. <laughs> I mean, he should, but you know, <laughs> plot armor over here. Do you, think, do you think, in the grand scheme of things, Hawk would win the world tournament? Yes. Okay. He's better than the two other best guys in the karate thing. <laughs> Says who? What? But says who? Scoreboard. Says the scoreboard. Scoreboard. scoreboard Dead men. Okay, Dead we no have cut. Mr. Daddy problems over here. And Which we one? have Mr. Weak back. Like, I'm the only person with a working body. Who do you think wins actually? Sorry. sorry. Who do I think wins actually? Yeah. Actually. Because I, I think you win. I think you're a real I, unsung well, hero. Well, I've been thinking I win too because I'm... I deserve it the most. <laughs> I'm the best. I'm, I'm the, the best, best looking. I deserve it the I'm most. I'm the smartest. I've been bouncing it around in my head. Obviously, there's one world where it's a character we know who wins. And then there's another world where there's oh. a character who we haven't met yet wins. That's what I've deduced so far. It's either someone we know that's going to win or someone we haven't met yet. Someone from Korea. Sure. Korea, wherever. I'm picking Korea. I just hope that... Um, are there any stunts that you want to do? Anything that you're particularly keen to do? Actually, yeah. I, I had a call with our stunt coordinator, Don Lee, and I was like, hey, there's this really cool... There's this UFC fighter. Really, or he's actually at one now. His name is Demetrius Johnson. His okay. name is Mighty Mouse. He's a flyweight fighter. He's one of my favorite fighters. Arguably one of the best of all time. Okay. He has this super great highlight reel moment where he ha- takes the guys back, like they're standing up. He picks them up. And as he's throwing him down, he throws him down where the guy's like transitioning sideways and he jumps up with him, catches one of his arms and lands in an arm bar. Mm, I see. So he wraps him. He's, he's backpacking him. Yeah. He picks him up and in the air, like he grabs and switches into a. Yeah. It's freaking sick. You should look it up. Demetrius Johnson flying arm bar. Okay. It's pretty cool. I would love to do that. A flying arm bar. A flying arm bar. Okay. I don't know if it's called that, but it's, I mean, that's kind of what it is. Okay. That, sounds, that would be sick. That sounds doable. Oh, here's a hope. I hope that we get to work, or like, I hope that the guys get to bring back Hillary Swank. That would be cool. That, that seems like the last kind of person Thing in to, the universe that they're, that they're missing. That'd be cool. Um, yeah, that'd be cool. But other than that, I really have no clue. I couldn't have guessed any of the other finales of the last season, so I don't know why I would think. But let's say someone's going to win the Sekai Tekai. Inherently, I thought Robbie because he hasn't won before, but I think he hasn't won before for a reason. But are they going to give him a pity win? Because then it's just a, a pity, pity win. win. Yeah. Did you get a pity win? No. <laughs> okay. There's no way I got a pity win. What you mean? Okay. 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 If anything, Robbie would tend. This would tend. If he wins, that would totally be a pity win. Because he'd be like, okay, Shalo got to win, or Miguel won that one. Hawk wins this one. 
I mean, we feel bad for Robbie. He so lost you're saying, the last two. So you're saying no. reverse psychology, you know, that's why he doesn't get to win? Because naturally... It's so be obvious he's going to get the pity win. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, you, ha- you heard it here first. Not Robbie. Miguel. Miguel and Hawk both win. Okay. <laughs> and, and finally, um, in last news, uh, last month at this point, or, or just in time, uh, the Blue Beetle trailer dropped. Yeah, yeah. And how did that feel? Good. Did you watch it on the big screen, right? Yeah, I got to watch it in a theater, which was nice. And it's crazy when we when we started doing the podcast. Like we film, we we did the podcast all throughout filming. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, it's crazy to see it finally come together. I mean, the CGI looks incredible. Oh, it looks so and, freaking good. And I'm just pumped for more of it to come out i think it's gonna be really weird for me to see you in a superhero suit yeah but I'm, yeah just because like without giggling yeah <laughs> i'm just gonna be, i don't know um because you look when you're in cobra kai and i watch it it's easy for easier for me to um like this what's the word uh this uh it's easier for me to like differentiate yeah differentiate you like Sholo, my friend from Miguel, because you separate look, the artist yeah, you look so different in that, mm, okay. you know. But normally, you have long hair and you have a little bit of facial hair, and you, that's you look more like yourself, in my opinion, mm, in Blue Beetle. Got so you. I'm I'm excited to see how you play like Jaime and not like just Sholo. But mm. yeah, it's gonna be. I'm really excited to see it. I think it's gonna be fucking dope. Well, it's snap. gonna be so cool. I just know like the freaking uh, premiere day is gonna be fucking cool. I feel like the whole time I'd be like. <gasps> Give me a sec. Yeah, well, you heard it for first, guys. We're excited to see it. I'm excited for it to come out. The trailer was really fun. And what about this writer strike? So, so Jacob, mm. if you didn't know, do you know what the writer strike is about? Uh, it's for syndication rights and like residuals. Uh, residuals. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, for those of y'all that want some of the news on the entertainment side, the inside scoop. Historically, writers have made their money. Um, like on cable and networks uh, for getting residuals anytime an episode or a movie of theirs that they've written on gets played. Yeah, or they'll sell a movie script and then they'll get residuals from that. There you go. Yeah. So, you know, and and this was the same case for actors as well. You'd get paid up front and then they would tell you, all right, every time this plays, you'll get X amount of dollars, a commission, right? But now with all the streamers, they're saying, we're just going to buy you guys out outright and we don't have to give you guys anything on the back end. Yeah. Because we no already, residuals. What the writer strike the writer strike that's happening now is basically like rectifying a contract that was made from the nineties when all of this new media wasn't around. So like these like the whole streamer thing and like, oh, we're just gonna buy you out and not do residuals. That wasn't a problem back then. So why is that important, Jacob? Why is it important to strike? Why are they striking? They're striking so that they so that they can from all these new media sources like Netflix and HBO and all these things they can actually get residuals from the things that they have sold scripts for or written scripts um, on certain TV shows because so they're not why, getting good residuals right now. So then there's so then there's two sides of this argument that I'm hearing. There's the side that wants the writers to get compensated for their work, and that means the other side of that must be people who who don't want the union to. I don't know what it is other than... Exercise their union rights, I guess. Yeah, right? I guess. I don't know what the other side is other than the new media. Greedy. F- yeah, greedy. bosses just don't want to shell out more money. We want the... I mean... We have friends that are writers. We want we the writers to yeah. strike. Or we want the writers to get more money. Expensive. So you heard it here first. By the time this comes out, we'll find out if the writers have struck. And if we get time off and I'll be spending my... Uh, You're end not going to get that much time off. It's in July, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're not going to get that much time off. Yeah, but maybe we'll get a chunk off in July. Okay. And I'll go to Spain. I'm coming and with for you, that, Anya. Maybe we I'll can. Maybe um, this Carmelita's dream honey for me. Do you want to... Yeah, let's just, let's just end it there. Okay. This episode of Lone Lobos is a Lone Lobos production. Produced by Monica Tamayo and JMKM. With intro music by Nicholas Gray. Like what you hear? Check us out on Instagram at Lone Lobos.